Ah, greetings. Welcome to the Shadow Star Nexus. I apologize for the cramped conditions today, but it was necessary in order to introduce you to the ship in question for this Star Trek Online Starship Stats Review. Now, I apologize that this is going to be a bit late coming up. I have uh, oh, been working a very long time on the Polo on build because I thought we'd have a bit of fun. If you don't know, Augment Dictator Games and Stu1701 have already had a look at this ship. I went after the lockbox first. And they had some interesting things to say. And I will be honest right now, I took some cues from Oggy when it came up with this build. Haha. <laughs> Oggy went the path that I was going to go. Well, I worked on Polarons. So, members of the Federation, the Klingon Defense Force, the Roman Republic, the Dominion, and guests from other alliances. Allow me to introduce you to the Alliance Rex Pilot Escort as we take a look at its stats. Oh dear, I appear to have left something up a bit too long. Now, the stats are on screen, but I have to digress a little bit because there are some very important things to focus on first. Primarily that this is such a positive ship that I want to get my negative opinions out the way first. Basically, the primary negative opinions I have gone first, get them out the way, and uh, some of them is personal to me, others are probably going to affect some others, but it has to be done, get it done, and then we don't have to worry about it, okay? Then we're going to focus on the positives. Because this is one of those ships that has a lot of positives. And just to make sure you're aware right now, this is a free to acquire ship. And it is such a good defiant replacement that I strongly advise getting your hands on this. If you are someone who loves carriers and pet builds, get your damn hands on this now. Get working on it. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to be like me and many of the other content creators. Work for it to get for it free. You won't regret it. Please trust me on that one. Well, I do want to note for you guys, though, is that some of us have gone and purchased it because, well, we love Star Trek Online. So I do ask, because I've seen a little bit of it, don't be too aggressive towards the players that do buy out to get this early. A lot of us are actually only doing it because we want to support the game. Of course... As much as I don't like the gambling mechanics that they love, they do stuff like this, and it deserves the support. Now, already I've started with technically a positive there, because this is a free to acquire ship, but here are the negatives. The things that have to be said gotten out of the way, straight off the bat. First of all, Allied ships normally have anti-proton weaponry. Now, because of this, a lot of people were thinking, oh, we're going to get anti-proton quad cannons because you would expect to see that on this ship it's got quad cannons two cannons on one in the cell two cannons on another in the cell it's very obviously got quad cannons like the defiant does like the legendary i believe it's only the legendary the, the legendary jimadar vanguard strike ship the oh god which one is it the legendary Bravel. And the legendary, if I'm remembering correctly, Milam, I could be wrong there. What I'm trying to essentially knock at, oh, the legendary Bortas. They are incredible ships that have all come with quad cannons. What are quad cannons? Well, unlike normal cannons and energy weapons, they don't drain power from the energy weapons. They drain power from the engines. So sounds kind of productive to a fast nimble ship like this but putting all that power into engines that you're going to be using on a ship like this they are always really good for escorts and we just don't have any protons yet still don't have any protons hopefully cryptic will come along and go we really should have put quad anti-protons on this here they are and just make it so that we can all anyone who's got the ship can claim it separately hopefully 
The other negative is something I generally look at later, but I'm going to get onto it now, and that's customization. There is no varied customization components. There's no varied versions of this. This is the Rex. This is the Rex in total. I like the design because it's kind of a cross between the Jemadar strike ship and the Defiant, which considering how much they hated each other in the Dominion War, is a great thing to see here. Two enemies now merge to create one stronger ally. I think that's really where the negatives end. That didn't take long, did it? So, let's get on with the positives because I can't hold back here. Because despite the hell I've had trying to get passes done, I have had some extreme nightmare trying to get them done. All I'm going to say is, I was still having fun, still enjoying myself, still finding myself smirking and laughing. And that, to me, is the merit of a good ship. So even before we get into the stats, I'm smiling. And I really want to make sure that comes across. I am smiling already. Now we have a tier 6 ship here that's available to any faction because it's an alliance ship. Like an escort, it has a hull modifier of 1.1 and a shield modifier of 1.2. Unusual. 5 forward weapons, 2 aft, an experimental weapon slot. We'll get onto that later. 3 device slots. The base turn rate of 16, the impulse modifier of 0.21 and an inertia rating of 60. She has bonus power settings of plus 15 to weapons and plus 5 to shields. Her greater benefits is the fact that she comes standardly with a cloak. Can equip dual cannons, has pilot maneuvers. The Alliance wingmen, which are very similar to the Gem Hadar wingmen, Vanguard wingmen, except they are all anti-proton ships, not polar on but otherwise they operate exactly the same. And of course this starship has the mastery package of escort, what you would expect for an escort. And then the make or break side of this ship, well, the ship made it. It made it brilliantly. Now this won't be what you consider a peak spec ship for the make or break, but for those that are going for a budget build, not really the build you're going to see from me in a bit. I will explain my build because it's a Polar One build and I know a lot of people don't have much experience with that. This ship does benefit quite strongly from the tactical side of things with five tactical, two engineering and four science console slots. These are marked then up with two universals should you X upgrade it to X2. The bridge officers, which are quite impressive in my opinion, from lowest to highest, is a Ensign Science, a Lieutenant Tactical with Miracle Worker Specialization, two Lieutenant Commanders, one of them being sorry, one of them being Universal, one of them being Engineer with Pilot Specialization and a commander tactical seat. I do apologize for my freezing there. I am autistic, please. If I go into a moment of silence, I hope that you will forgive me for that. I know I've annoyed some people with that in the past. Fundamentally, what we have here is a DPS powerhouse. And actually, this is a really powerful energy boat. The Lieutenant Tactical Miracle Worker seat Gives you some sizable strength there, and the pilot, it, it may not be absolute full spec command pilot seating. But reroute reserves on this build as a beam fire wheel build that I went with. Sorry, Aki, I did do a fellow beam fire wheel build, just mine is broadside biased, yours was forward biased. <laughs> 
It becomes forward biased if you have dual beams. <laughs> or gust. No, what I'm trying to say is... <laughs> this is one of those ships that really easily performs in the energy boat meta. It's not super powerful, but for anyone who is free to play and wants to be able to perform there and do elite runs without spending much, this ship will do it. That, that just wins it straight away for me in the DPS category. So my DPS score for this ship is 10 out of 10. The fact that this is a free to play vessel that any player can get their hands on and it will actually be strong enough for you to make a elite TFO build and run elite TFOs, which is quite important at the moment, is amazing to see. And I'm very thankful to Cryptic for it. Now, from that, let's talk about the uh, weak spot, tanking. Now, two engineering consoles and a very low hull modifier with a semi-reasonable shield modifier this ship isn't going to be winning any rewards for tanking. I say this knowing that there are certain names among my personal fleet of followers that, well, I know one of you guys are going to come along and go, uh, I'm tanking with this ship and I'm not even showing an ounce of hull damage and I'm going to be sitting in like you show off. Yeah, middle finger to you, buddy. <laughs> I love you, really. Honestly, I'm not expecting this ship to be an amazing tank, but we can at least say that it wasn't expected to begin with. We are flying an escort. The upside is she's not completely a glass cannon. So you can take a bit of punishment and get yourself out there. And the one thing this ship really benefits from, which once again, my favorite build youtuber will dislike probably because he loves to sit still this ship really performs when it's moving which is why i went for a broadside beam fire wheel build on this ship <laughs> and it paid off it paid off quite well actually honestly despite the level of threat i was generating with a beam fight wheel build, broadside beam fight wheel build, and sticking quite heavily in the middle of an elite um, ISE run. Well, ISE, yeah, elite. I didn't die. Boy, was I happy with that. Because I ended up doing one of those random runs and I did not have a tank. I thought I was dead. I didn't die. I did quite well. I didn't have to leave action too long to help recover myself. As a support player, which means generally you end up suffering in the... You bet tend to be more glass than even an escort is. Even in DPS is. That was quite... I was quite thankful for that. So tanking score for me is 5 out of 10. Could be better. But it's not terrible. Support. Right. Okay, so obviously escort, no secondary deflector, science side of things with this ship is poor. So don't expect to be doing unbelievably strong meta support drain builds, support control builds with this ship. Obviously it's an escort. Escorts are probably the most constricted ships you're going to get. They seldom have a lot of flexibility. However, with that being said, this ship does do the support DPS side of things pretty well. And how if the DPS, um, the support DPS hillboat meta was still viable, I could easily see this being one of those ships to fly with the Kobayashi Maru, knowing that you are helping the DPSs do more damage while also sustaining everyone's health. It used to be, it used to be great. Uh, don't expect to be doing that nowadays. Believe me, the tanks are going to wonder why you're trying to heal them. The DPSs are going to be thinking the tanks got all the threat. Why are you trying to heal me? I'm not taking that much damage. And it's... Yeah, you can see why that has sort of dropped out. However, the DPS control boat... DPS support control boat... That works 
okay with this ship, bearing in mind that you will sacrifice overall DPS power to do it. The same can be said for the debuff. Honestly, I will say that as far as support goes, this ship does debuffing the best. So if you want to be a support player, my recommendation would be to go the debuff route and try to debuff the enemy so that the DPSs can do greater damage. But overall, I'm not too disappointed, especially considering it's a free ship. So I'll give it seven out of 10. Now, holy moly. You might be seeing it on screen, but the first thing I want to get to from here is to talk about the console. Because the console is wonderful. Summoning a few pets that, well, some of them had, have detail improvements, some of them haven't. It's uh, kind of funny that way. Honestly, I was hoping. <laughs> I was hoping they would have improved the details on the other three because uh, right now the. Uh, Define Escort, yes, the, the Define Escort, you're going to see why I'm calling it the Define Escort. The Define Escort did get an upgrade date in Hull, and as a result, it kind of uh, shows in comparison to the rest of them. But you're never really looking at them that closely, so it's not too bad. The other side of things I want to mention is, as much as the console summons those four in, combined with the pets, you're getting quite a strong advantage from a certain console that I put use into while utilizing my cannon build variant. Now, I'm going to semi-stop here because I'm not going to really talk about the cannon variant so much. I think you can guess. My cannon build is basically the same as my um, beam fight wheel build. The only difference was I was using cannon scatter volley and I was using consoles that would benefit more towards using cannon and traits of course that would benefit cannon to be honest it was only one console i changed so fundamentally speaking there's no point in me talking about both too much but i do want to bring this up if you go cannon build and you have the hydra console i do strongly recommend using it as i saw a sizable increase in dps output just from having that console in, in place of what I was using with this one which was the uh, very expensive console you get from um, the Excelsior 2 but that's neither here nor there one second ah it's always nice when they fly in now while we're sitting here I'm going to drop back just a little bit so my pets don't try to engage whoopsie daisy there are some key things to bring up first of all as just so you guys know about it the wingmen have distinctive abilities you can synchronize them or keep them separate one ability will allow you to heal yourself another will re regenerate your shields and finally the other is basically a scatter volley barrage and it literally is cannon scatter volley one used by pets it's a good way for you to form up enemies onto a target so if you do want to focus fire it's a way you can trigger them to do it and it doesn't count as their own cannon scatter volley which is quite nice you may see them pull that off if you have traits that are giving them beam overload or cannon scatter volley well, cannon scatter volley because they've got cannons on them that's what you'll see be happening now bring it up and Oh, this is version 4 of the build. Did I not say version 5? Fuck. Ah, oh, crap. Before I go into any build stuff and that, we will discuss the traits in action. And since we're here, I'm going to unequip you and equip the Hydra. Yoink. Because... The first thing I'm going to talk about is the Bleedingly Nice console. This console we get with the ship is called the Elite Alliance Squadron Beacon. It gives you 8% crit severity and plus 10% flight speed. 
Trust me, this ship is so damn fast to begin with that it was not necessary, but hey, brilliant for other ships. Now, the active ability will summon in four wingmen. And so essentially you get four more wingmen, similar to the Alliance wingmen. Now, I should note right now that when it comes to making cinematic videos, I fucking hate them because of that alpha and beta that sit above them. But when it comes to actual use, I fucking love them. And actually having wingmen that perform as effectively as they do, it's nice. Actually, I'll say they perform better. The right wing inner will be a Federation escort. The right wing outer will be a Romulan escort. The left wing inner will be a Klingon bird of prey. The left wing outer will be a Jemadar fighter. Now, I'm going to move forward and show you a combination attack of them and the Hydra. Because I know a lot of you will be wondering, do they form up with the Hydra? Well, yes. Yes, they do. Some of them in, and you may notice the fine escort. That's why I was calling it that. Moving on the Hiki and Hadiki. And here is Hydra. <laughs> Pretty powerful if I do say so. That is why I was using the Hydra so much on the cannon build. Because the Hydra console boosts cannon fire. And having it combined out here was just a good idea. Now, I would love to show you just the advanced Polaron weaponry we have here. But, uh... Everyone's going to attack first of all, so I'm going to have to do this quick. The easiest way I can do it is to shoot by and go, hey, Galor class, eat shit. Right there, we are seeing its weapon firing. Love how it exhausts out the back, and quite frankly, this experimental weapon looks beautiful when in action. It's an omnidirectional weapon with a lot of firepower. Quite frankly, I couldn't be happier with it. Now, excuse me while I fall back. My uh, pets can join in with me. Go on, pets. Give me a good heal. There we go. Oi. Oh, I didn't synchronize them. <laughs> Whoops. Don't, synchron don't synchronize them and they don't work properly. Right. Okay. Now. Come to a stationery. And for those who would love to see it in a more Jemadar color because that's how I prefer to see it <laughs> it just looks so much better right so the experimental weapon now I've already said made it quite clear I'm a huge fan of the elite alliance squadron beacon it's getting a 9 out of 10 from me that Galo class wants to die excuse me a second fuck you <laughs> No one liked you anyway. I do love that plasma cloud they've let loose. Right, um, what was I saying? Oh, yes. No. The experimental weapon that you get with this ship is very, very nice to use. Now, it performed much higher than I expected it to. A incredible amount higher. Um, I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be able to bring up what I'm trying to bring up to have a look here to check it. But we will try nonetheless because, oh god, that could have been a bit of an awkward moment just then. Yink. Right, uh... Do, 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 what is it called again? Inertial polar on shunt. Da 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 Um There you go. So I'm going to be nicking 
Oggy's numbers here because he got some better numbers than I initially did. But after I did my Polar One damage boosting, yeah, I went up. <laughs> so he managed to pull a 66,000 DPS out of this uh, wonderful ability while running Infected Conduit. I believe in ISE. And that is, quite frankly, better than I was expecting from it. At the same time, when I did my runs, and it should be noted, this weapon does benefit from polar on damage boosting. Oh, I know I'm not as good a pilot, but I was getting close. I was happy about that. In my ISC run, I got pretty damn close. So... What am I saying here? Well, I called it 360 degree, it's not. It's 250 degree targeting arc with around 10,000 damage for myself right now. And it has a 72.11% haste to the weapons, increasing with flight speed up to 200% at 180. Um, give you a rough idea what that looks like. Okay, pets. Let's go for my full speed and I'm going to show you basically uh, I am hitting with 70, whoop, 77 power. I'm reaching impulse level 64. I'm not using any of my boosting at the moment and that has not altered. Damn it. Do I really need to go in faster than that. Oops, there you go. <laughs> there was the boost up. I went to full impulse does mean this weapon hits actually really hard even if you've just come out of full impulse it's just a shame all the other weapons won't the other side effects i wanted to bring up it is i'm not using this weapon at, in its best state i didn't modify it and that's just because i <laughs> trying to do this build and bearing in mind that I used um, Foron infused Polarons up to now, I literally double checked with one of Oggy's videos as to what he considered the meta for Polaron weaponry to be. And I can believe him because it definitely performed as well, if not better, than my uh, Pol Foron infused Polarons. It cost me a lot in salvage, so I wasn't able to modify this. Sorry, I can't show you this at its best spec. What I can tell you, though, is that you can re-engineer it. And after re-engineering it, you should be seeing a lot better performance than even I got. Or probably better than Oggy got if you're using a Polar One support in build. But bear in mind, the numbers I gave you for Oggy was on the phaser build. Honestly, this is a really good experimental weapon well worth getting your hands on even if you're not normally a polar one player now from that we get to talk about one of my uh something i wasn't sure about not when i initially read it but i fucking love it inertial supremacy debuff foes during weapon firing modes weapon attacks during an AOE firing mode, so my personal preferred pirate wheel is one of them, can kind of scatter volley, torpedo spread, they will trigger it off, will apply a minus 28.1 damage resistance rating to foes, sorry, damage resistance rating debuff to foes for 30 seconds, scaling with your speed up to 50, 280. Now, as you're going to see when this when I fly the ship later. You may not have been seeing a lot of speed out of me naturally, but when I'm in action, this ship speed explodes and I was easily getting the full minus 50 from this. Very easily. The only problem I've got with it is, well, this is a trait you'd only ever use on a dip escort or a really high speed ship. Why? Because it takes so much speed to get the full effect of it and then there's the problem that this trait is not very powerful 
considering all it takes to get that if you was to be using it on a support build a general support build ship you can get that but you won't be holding it as often as you would do with this escort which is annoying because as a support build debuffer you want to near enough guarantee all your debuffs are active all of them a minus 50 that you're gonna have about 50% of the time that's not efficient for a support DPS vessel so where this trait really belongs it's not worth it even on a DPS ship on, on, definitely on a DPS so you don't want to be swapping out one of your other traits for this guaranteed if you're a DPS -er. tanks no point you, you well it's not very often you see a speed tank maybe a speed tank can benefit from it but really for tanks no point and uh support minimal point good early game good low end um running standard or advanced may oh no not even in advanced to be honest honestly speaking this is okay for people that are generally hitting the 10k to 50k possibly up to 100k but well, if you're someone who's gone beyond that point, you really don't want to be looking at this trait. So, I said I'll get all the negatives out of the way. I do want to look at this as more of a neutral. It's got its uses, but it's just not going to hold up to the end game. Doesn't matter. It's on a free-to-play ship. You don't really expect too much of a free-to-play ship to hold up to the end game. I say looking at the console and the fucking experimental weapon. Me, my words there. Honestly, this is getting the worst score for me. The trait is, it is getting two out of ten, and it's only getting two marks because it's free to get, and because it has a use. But honestly, it's a trait. Don't worry about it. Do not worry about this trait. Now, luckily, the rest of the mastery you get with this ship is quite useful for what you'll be doing with it: accuracy, defense. Kinetic and energy damage boosting. And finally, critical chance. Always lovely to have this sort of thing on an escort. But it's the escort mastery package. What do you expect? Okay. Probably a good time for me to explain a bit about the build I went with here. Because this is a polar one build. I understand a lot of you probably don't play the grapefruit metas. Honestly, it's been a while since I've flown the grapefruit. So... Yeah, that's why I checked out Oggy for a bit of an update to see what he was thinking about the current meta situation for it. Interesting to see that we agreed most of it. Do I have to say his build for this ship actually improved on the other video? But fundamentally, here's the breakdown for you. First of all, we have the advanced Paizo Polaron Beam Array. I was going to go full Paizo build on this ship because I was kind of expecting that to be important generally speaking for survival purposes and that but it turned out to not be as important as I was expect I still mean to do one at some point but I need a lot more salvage before I do that the benefits of the Paizo though is that simple extra damage you're getting out from it that is also benefiting Oh sorry I'm trying to look up look to read for it. Protomatter regeneration influx. 5% chance to trigger and this will give you a plus 303 to your shield regeneration for 10 seconds and a plus 2.5% of your maximum hole for 10 seconds. Now, there is theoretically a better version. You could go and pick up the Fleet Colony versions of this weapon. They're basically the same thing. Only they have a proc in place, which means... Uh, 
Fortunately, they're not as powerful as weapons themselves. They're better for survivability, but not as good as physical use weapons. Hence, Hydropolyon being the more optimal choice. Now, the other weapons on this ship have come from one of my personal favorite locations. The... Oh, what's it called? The Gamma Task Force Reputation. Absolutely love this rep. These are the inhibiting Polaron beam rays. Their effective use is... Where I see it, so I'll give you the right numbers. can't believe I'm not seeing this right now. I'm so sorry. Ah, oh, there you go. 2.5% 2, 2 chance for engines offline for foes within 2 kilometers of the target hit. This also actually includes the target you hit. So what this essentially is, is a possible chance to perform a phaser proc, but guaranteed onto engines, to not only the one target, but enemies nearby. Now, I would love a version of this, which disabled weapons or shields that would be amazing engines useful for control and Polaron is kind of the sciencey energy so I actually do appreciate the fact that it disables engines helping you to confine control enemies into one space and effectively boost out the damage you can get off on a further upside to this though it comes with some reputation weaponry. Now, I used the reputation weaponry because I was going for... English me. Going for some set bonuses. Ironically, the Paizo Polar one are also part of a set bonus from reputation. So, I will explain them both now. First of all, Paizo's benefits from the piezo electric focuser now as you can see this is a console that benefits polar on damage output plasma damage output and will also grant you flight turn rate and maximum shield capacity it's quite good for survivability especially on a ship like this which actually has better shields than it has hull that doesn't sound right because it's not right but i call it stats it is right the upside, though, is that the two-piece set, you gain access to piezoelectric technologies. This gives you a further plus 15% to both plasma and polaron, a plus 15% to photon projectile weaponry. This is mostly because the final set bonus of this is a photonic weapon, and a plus 20% to starship drain expertise. For those that don't know, polaron weaponry tends to be, is, a drain proc weapon. It drains enemies enemies power i'm pretty sure this one still has the drain proc if it doesn't then i'm done but generally speaking most polarons will have a drain proc on them that will drain 25 power from random subsystems i believe it is which can be quite effective in use it is nice but Thanks to the two-piece bonus we've got here, we're actually boosting that higher. We're not only boosting out the damage output, but if I was using standard polar ones here, I would be improving the actual effectiveness of those procs when they are triggered. Nice. Works relatively well together. I have tested it together, and it is not amazing, but sizable enough that I like it. Now, with the inhibiting polar ones, we have the inhibiting Polaron Omni and turret either a heavy turret or the omnidirectional these are both on the same rep they are acquired separately obviously and they have the basic outputs that you'd expect the same <sighs> English me the same triggers as the standard inhibiting Polarons but they are slightly more powerful and they have an extra proc, which I can never remember which one of these it is. So I'm just going to ignore that for the moment. Because what I really want to focus on is the two-piece set bonus we nicked here. 
Combining it with a, another console down below, we are getting a plus 10% to Chronoton weapon damage. I wonder why that is. Could it be because the inhibiting Polarons have a Chronoton weapon? <laughs> yes, it is. Much like with the Lucari's rep, the Gemadar rep, the Gamma Task Force rep, will make sure that the two-piece bonus benefits everything in its set. But you're also gaining here a plus 10% to phaser and polaron damage. I'm a little bit annoyed that these aren't 15% like it, like the Lucari one, but um, there's got to be a reason for it. And a plus 10% to flight turn rate. Really good for escorts. But also good for uh, those bigger Gemadar science carriers that are a little bit slow moving. Then we have the Ordnance Accelerator, which comes from the Gemahar, the Gamma Task Force reputation. This one has a minus 1.5 to shared 1.5 seconds for shared mine recharge time. Very useful for people that utilize mine builds. Plus 20% to mine recharge speed. That is two benefits for the recharge time of mines there, people. Great for you mine layers. Plus 26.3 to projectile weapon damage, plus 26.3 to phaser and polar on end direct energy weapon damage. This is one of those if you're doing a polar on build, you might want you might choose to skip on one of these, but you definitely want the other. So pick your choice. No matter what you're doing on a polar on build, you want at least one of these two on it. Now a lot of people get behind the morphogenic set, and I'm going to explain why I didn't. So please, bear, in, bear with me on this small piece. The morphogenic set has, at its two-piece, a reasonably useful ability. Plus 15% to recharge time for fire wheel beam overload has the, the firing modes, and also certain attack patterns. It's just one... One fucking thing I find annoying about the two-piece set bonus. It's too easy to achieve. Oh, sorry. I don't mean the two-piece set bonus is easy to achieve. I mean, you can get that anywhere else. Literally, my Ox to Bat running build that I'm using for this has got a cooldown for all bridge officer abilities so effective that that would be completely useless to me. And as for the third three-piece set bonus, which would require me to have not only the morphogenic, but I would have to use the Polaron Energy Torpedo, which is slow firing, and the morphogenic energy weapon, which would have taken the place of that inhibiting Polaron Omni that I have on the back there, working as the part of the two-piece set bonus. It wasn't worth it. Now, if I was going to pull it on this build, I would most likely have ended up wanting to drop one inhibiting so I could put the Omni there and the Morphogenic Torpedo at the front. But because of its slow fire rate, it would actually negatively impact my build very badly. It was not worth me throwing it on. However, it is a free to acquire set. You get it from doing the Dominion storyline. Um, just going to remind myself. You do the Gamma Quadrant storyline, final mission, you get all three pieces from there. And on free to play budget build, it is very powerful and definitely something you want to get if you are running full free to play. Because what I've done here, though, is a more higher level free to play. Unfortunately, I would have to say, uh, no, no. Pass up. I say free to play here. Most of what I'm using on this ship are relatively... You can get everything on this ship via free to play. It's just some of it's expensive. I apologize for that factor. But I wanted to come up with a build that would be more accessible to most people. As far as I went with traits, I literally followed Oggy's cue and went with whoops it easy. Superior beam training. A good day to die. Context for kings. 
Duelist Feather, Terran Targeting Systems, two of my favorites, Innocuous and op Operative, Inspirational Leader, Intelligent Agent Attaché, Unconventional Systems, and of course the must-have Boimler Effect. If you don't have this, get it. It is a use on all builds. As far as Starship Crates went, some of it's obvious. Emergency weapon cycle, oh, overpowered and overgunned. I'm sorry that that is from the legendary, the tenth anniversary legendary Defiant. Obviously, that's not cheap, but there are reasonable things you can put in its place. Come on, before the storm, where we get expensive again. Calculated broadsides, thunder run. Oh dear, ruin of our enemies and universal designs um a lot of you are probably screaming at me because only two of them are cheap zen store ones the rest of them are quite expensive to get your hands on but it was necessary to make this build as effective as it was as far as space reputation went i went with Tyler's duality tactical advantage precision Advanced Tactical Systems and Radiant Detonation Matrix. For those that don't know, this is a very useful ability if you are using Beam Fire at will. I wouldn't overly recommend it on any other build, but if you are specifically running Beam Fire at will, this is one of those reputation abilities that is strongly worth putting on now. It kind of went out, it's kind of come back. I don't know if they buffed it, but it worked pretty well. Fundamentally speaking though, I do want to show you how this ship performs, so without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? Let me get my head straight, I need a drink of water It's been days I've had a headache Don't wanna wake up one day, feel like I regret things I want my story just to have a happy ending And I don't got a plan B or plan A is all I need Took the ships from the sea and burnt them all, no retreat It's kill or get eat and get buried with the seeds But that makes me feel free, hella focused on my dreams I got habits, they're established I'm doing things a bit manic, but I can handle it Juggle this, juggle that Struggle here, lose some cash Win and lose, make it back You can choose your own path Nothing good comes fast Nothing fast ever lasts So I'll be patient but attack Every day like it's my last Push the pedal to the gas Burn the fuel that I have Start a fire, light a mash I ain't never looking back So plant hard in your feet There's no retreat Burn the boats on the shore Till they're buried underneath There ain't no going back Forget the past out of desperation Are the people born who can last There's no retreat Don't believe You got it in you You can do anything That you think That you need Don't be scared Don't succeed The only people who can be Are the ones who don't retreat Responsible to try to make all the impossible go flip to probable. This life is not something that's optional. It's got its obstacles, but it's a gift. So don't miss out on your chance to be phenomenal. Push all the chips in. I take risks cause risky wins. I take hits straight to the chin. They get right back up again. I don't lose, I always win. Cause any loss is a lesson. I got a different engine. Wanna go, I'll go again. I'm on the chase while they running. Call the plays that are coming. Turn a profit out of nothing. Like a profit up and coming. Taking shots, I'm always gunning. When I gamble, Never bluffing Last shot I'll be clutching Hit the shot They always wanted Game winners Train killers I can make Seven figures Eight figures Nine figures Pay for any fucking dinner Paint a picture Life richer Good people Good liquor Life bigger Fight winner I just wanna get there quicker So plan hard in your feet There's no retreat Burn the boats on the shore Till they're buried underneath There ain't no going back 
forget the past out of desperation All the people born who can last There's no retreat but believe You got it in you, you can do anything That you think, that you need Don't be scared, don't succeed The only people who can lead Are the ones who don't retreat
Well, guys, I think it's safe to say this is one impressive and beautiful starship. Honestly, I can't sing its praises enough. I did watch Oggy's video on this ship beforehand, along with some others. And uh, I'm just annoyed that I don't have a DPS score that I can show you that is as good as he's. In general speaking, my beam fire wheel build reached approximately... 150k? I think it was 150k. My cannon scatter volley build hits far better at 210. And these were running ISE runs, not ISA like I would normally do. So I am a bit dis Okay, I'm pretty disappointed in my own performance, but that is my ability, not a representation of the ship's ability. Please keep in mind that, like I say, I am a support player. When you're a DPS support player, it's not your DPS you're focused on. You're focused on how you can help out the other DPS players. As such, my damage will never be graphically high. Not like Oggy, who, with his phaser build, which was utilizing Beamfire will 1, Kima Site 2, Torpedo Spread 3, he had Radiant Detonation as well going on, the Tropic Rider, uh, all Dark Matter going on, he used the Polaron Shunt, and he was using the new, ra from what I can tell, the new Radiolytic Phaser Dual Beam Banks for a forward bias build, and um, yeah, he came out with 660k DPS. And this phaser build is the one with the Polaron weapon hitting... Sorry, 47 DPS. What did I say it was earlier? I think I read his fire at will earlier. Whoops! Oh, that means my Polaron did do better. Yes! At least I had my Polaron hitting harder. <laughs> All on. <laughs> oh. Fun. All I'm going to say is this, this ship is extremely impressive and easy to get your hands on. All you have to do is take part in the event and the best event to do is the Battle of War 359. It's so much fun to fly, it's so easy to do. It's not a hard TFO at all. Think Battle of the Binary Stars, but more memorable, especially for the... Um, older generation of Star Trek fan and quite frankly get this done and get the ship I think it's going to take you about 14 days to get it might be a bit more I can't remember how many points you had to earn because I've been buy I've been doing the buyouts all the years like I say I like to support the game and it also means I get it day one so I've been playing around with this ship since day one it is 6,000 Zen if you want to buy it out without doing any of the event or take part in some of the event half the price for you. You can make the ship £20 to you, it is £40 for me. It's worth picking up. Console is great for anyone that likes pet builds. The... I can't believe I'm saying this, but the experimental weapon is now, in my personal opinion, ranked second. I know... DPSs will argue with me on that one. You're welcome to as well because trust me, if you hear DPSs arguing below saying no, no, it's not the second best experimental weapon, trust them. I'm taking I'm saying this based on my own opinion. My personal favorite is the Solitum Wave Impeller, then it's this one. It used to be well, I'm not gonna go into what it used to be. Honestly speaking, just for what you get with this ship and the ship itself, it's very, very much worth picking up. It's a very powerful ship. I'm so glad it's got wingmen. And I promise you, if you're a DPS fan, you're going to love flying this ship. And if you want to step your toes into DPS, this is a perfect ship to start off with. Now, with that being said, can I say 
a massive thank you to Oggy for doing his video, which has helped to guide me with mine. A huge thank you to Skyhawkings, XG Blackbird, and Tribal Typhoon, the patrons of this channel, as well as a fan, a future thank you to any future Patreons, YouTube members, and donators. You guys are the ones that's helping me achieve my dream with this channel. Honestly, if this becomes my full-time career, it will do my health so much good versus what is going on in my life at the moment. So all of you who do support the channel and help me out, thank you so much. Hope to see you all in the future. Stay safe, guys. And remember, you go in the battle, reclaim your life. Once reclaimed, Remember to live long and prosper. Ciao for now. Thank you.